YouTube, this is an Ace Special, and today I thought we would do things a little bit differently today and talk about something that nobody else has really talked about, and that would be True Color Film of World War I. Now, when I talk about True Color Film, I am not talking about colorized film, which you can find in documentaries, for example, such as World War I in Color. And while, we, um, while some people do know about true color photographs, and there are those that, entire websites dedicated to them, these are still images. They are not moving pictures. What we are going to deal with today are actual moving pictures, true color footage of World War I. But first, I feel I should uh, go and discuss the backstory of the film processes used at the time of World War I, then that were also used specifically in making the true color footage. In fact, according to my research, there were at least five films taken of World War I in true color. In addition, I should mention that three different distinct film processes were used in making these films. So without further ado, I believe we should start with the story of the first process we'll be discussing. And the story should start in 1901 or 2, and our story begins with a man named Edward Raymond Turner. At that time, Turner created the Lee Turner Process, named also after a financial backer at the time. This was the first true color film process ever to exist. Unfortunately, it was not without its issues. While it was a true three color process, it was very impractical for him to actually project. And the images that you see now, which are of his children and of other daily life things, were sadly never really shown in true color the way they should have been. The issue is he could make color film, but he could not really show it at the time. Unfortunately, Turner died of a heart attack in 1903 and thus was never able to perfect his design. As a result, another one of his financiers, in this case, Mr. Charles Urban, decided to ask George Albert Smith to work on the project. Smith took the basic Lee Turner process and simplified it into a two-color process and was able to make it possible to actually project the film onto the big screen. What he had created would come to be known as Kinemacolor and was first used as early as 1906, but became publicly available in 1908. Public screenings were shown at theaters, and the process was sold to companies across the world. The Kinemacolor Company in the UK was actually making quite a bit reasonable success in terms of profits because of this. They were able to uh, license Kinemacolor to the United States, France, and Japan. Unfortunately, the Kinemacolor Company of France was a financial disaster and closed rather shortly. And while the Kinemacolor Company of the U.S. had shown some promise, it too would ultimately fail in the end. However, in the process it was at least able to provide some historically significant footage, including some true color images of President Taft, as well as a few other films. Bizarrely enough, however, the Kinemacolor Company of Japan seemed to actually have some reasonable success and would go on to actually outlive even the base Kinemacolor Company, producing films in true color as late as 1917. Which brings us back to Kinemacolor and what ultimately happened to it. In 1911, a legal dispute occurred between Kinemacolor and a rival process known as Biocolor. George Albert Smith alleged that Biocolor was infringing on the patent rights of Kinemacolor, and therefore was an illegal process. The courts originally favored Kinemacolor, however, after years of debating in an appeal system, in 1914, the judge of that particular appeal court favored Biocolor. This eventually led to the downfall of Kinemacolor, as they were not able to make a profit from licensing their process anymore, and a whole bunch of derivatives were beginning to appear on the marketplace. Ultimately, Kinemacolor would close down in 1914, selling off its assets. But, the process was still available to Charles Urban, and he made at least two documentary films of the First World War using Kinemacolor. 
The first, in 1914, was called with the Fighting Forces of Europe, and showcased British, French, Belgium, Russian, and even Japanese soldiers of the First World War. While stock footage was used for certain segments of it, they did actually go to the battlefields of the Western Front in 1914 to film certain segments. This makes this the only film footage of the First World War on the Western Front of ground troops in true color. However, in 1915, the British government hired Charles Urban to make another propaganda film, and this one was called Britain Prepared. In it, Charles Urban used Kinemacolor footage of the British Royal Navy out at sea. It should be noted that while this film was originally considered lost, it was recently discovered in 2008 in a stock footage company. Presently, these true color sequences of Britain Prepared are being stored at the Library of Congress. It should be noted that Kinemacolor did have a few faults. It was actually very, very expensive because it required a special projector to show the color of the film. In addition, because it used an alternating red and green filter, it required twice the amount of film reel as standard footage, making it twice as expensive on that alone. I would strongly suggest having a look at the list of Kinemacolor films, as it is actually surprisingly lengthy. I should mention in passing with the Kinemacolor film process, that with the fighting forces of Europe is tragically considered a lost film, as in nobody knows where it is. However, it still may exist out there somewhere. Moving on from Kinemacolor, there was at least one derivative that made a World War I film, and this process was called Prisma I. The film was a documentary called Our Navy, released in either early 1918 or this winter of 1917, depending on the source and it was of the United States Navy, both at port and out at sea on the eastern coast. It does not, however, seem to be a very well distributed film, as there aren't even any posters available these days. That is something that even the fighting forces of Europe still has. Moving on from Prisma, let's discuss the last system that was used to record footage of the war in color. This was Guamont's Chronochrome. This was unique in that it was a three-color process, making it more advanced than the previous two processes mentioned. In addition, there was at least two films showing chronochrome. The first was of the Armistice Parade in 1918. The second was taken on July of 1919 during a victory parade as well. While it should be mentioned that the fighting did actually stop in 1918, as everyone remembers, there was still technically a state of war up into the 1920s thanks to various peace treaties that needed to be signed. So therefore, this footage was technically taken during wartime and is therefore the only footage actually readily available on the internet. Well, that's about it as far as this discussion is concerned. However, before I go, I'm going to showcase a little bit of an audio recording this was taken in 1918 at Lille and is actual combat audio of British artillery firing on German positions. So have a listen as this is some of the only audio recording actually taken of the war. Right. Right. 
Right. Right. Right. Right. Right. Right. Right. Right. Right. Right. Right. Right. Right. Right. Right. Right. Right. Right. Right. Right. Right. Right. Right. Right. Right. Right. Right. Right. Right. Right. Right. Right. Right.